Us will be coming on in in just a moment, but we're going to honor you for being on time and go ahead and start because you got here. Give yourself a hand. All right. This is going to be another great day in the Lord's presence. Last Sunday was awesome as God showed up and spoke to us. He's going to speak to us again today in worship and song and in his word, and it's going to be a great time to get the direction from God as to how to enter on into that place of abundance that he's died to give us. So I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you are too. If you are our guest today, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Praise Center. Let them know how glad you are that they're here. Amen. Indeed. Would you help me welcome the Lord into this place? Before I do that, though, if you are our guest for the first time, hopefully you received a folder. And if you would take the information sheet in that folder and fill that out for us, that would be great so that we could respond to you and let you know how glad we are that you're here. Now, would you help me? Let's welcome the Lord. Lord, thank you for being here today as our God, as our King, as our provider, our healer, our deliverer. We thank you that you came into this building today when the first believer walked in. They brought you with them. You're an ever-present help in our time of trouble. And Lord, you know the situation that we all face individually and corporately and every way. And I thank you, Lord, that you are the solution. You are the answer. And we just pray in Jesus' name today that revelation knowledge would come to us to show us, to illuminate our path so that we could walk in the victory that you've died to give us. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do as you inhabit our praises. Let your anointing fall fresh right now on every single one of us. May we join in with that heavenly choir in singing you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You ready to worship God this morning? Then let's bless the Lord the way it tells us to in the psalm. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord and bless the Lord.
get by, amen? He called us to thrive. Who's ready to thrive in this place? I said, who's ready to thrive? I can't hear anybody. There's a few of you ready to thrive. All right. God's promise gives us victory, amen? Come on, let's get excited. name by faith we are not going back we're not backing down we're going forward how many of you ready to thrive amen last week we learned that there is an until things were a certain way until and our until began last Sunday and it's going to continue from this Sunday on it's time to go forward Yes. Before you sit down, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going forward. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. It is time to receive God's tithes and our offerings. Amen. Let's worship him as we do this this morning. He is worthy of our best. I just want to ask a question. For several weeks prior to the beginning of the year, I, I ask you to please consider making sure that your very first check, your very first offering, your very first gift for the year was to the kingdom of God. How many of you did that? You made your first thing? Wow, that's awesome. That is so, so awesome. God's going to refine and redeem all the rest of your year because you put him first at the beginning of the year. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. And we're going to hear about that more today as we get into his word. I am excited that you're here. And I'm excited more that God's here. Amen. Let's make our declaration together. I am a worshiper. I was created by God to worship. Therefore, as an act of worship, I bring God's tithes and my offerings into your storehouse. Based upon your word, I know I will be blessed, although that is not the reason I give. I give with a grateful heart because I love you, and I want to honor you by obeying your word as an expression of my faith. I trust you to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room for it. I trust you to rebuke the devourer for my sake and to protect my finances. I trust you to honor your word and save my whole family, that they may serve you and walk in health and abundance. And as you bless me, I will bless others and give freely as you direct me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. All right, I'm going to keep you informed on what's happening here. I just want to tell you, you guys sound great this morning. I love it. Sing more. Sing loud. Sing proud. It is awesome. All right, coming up, TPC's annual business meeting is scheduled for Sunday, February the 1st, immediately following the worship service. Uh, this will be a called meeting for all members of the Praise Center. Please, if you're a member here, please make every effort to attend. There are, there's important business to discuss. All right, our next sermon evangelism project will be Saturday, January the 24th. We'll be participating in Winterfest in the city of Monroe, and that will be by helping the kids roast marshmallows around a fire pit. We need volunteers to be there early to help get the fire pit ready. The event starts at 10 a.m. and ends at 4. We also need uh, some small donations toward the cost of marshmallows and baggies. We're providing 500 baggies of marshmallows, just to give you an idea. 
and to cover all the kids that want to roast them. And so if you did that last year, you know it was cold, but it was a lot of fun, and we touched a lot of kids' lives. Um, we were one of the very few, we were one of the only churches around, and that's good, but you know, that's what we're called to do is show them Christ's love. So we're going to do it again this year, and we're hoping for big rewards out of that. Amen? All right. Please sign up in the hall at the Servant Evangelism table. There's a sign-up sheet if you're interested in volunteering in that project. That would be great. All right. Life groups resumed last week. If you aren't participating in a life group, please consider doing that. You are definitely missing out. It is never too late to join a group, and you can sign up in the hallway to your right, my left. There's sheets out there on the wall. Please look over those, and if you see one that you don't like or are not interested in, that's okay. God says start one, and he'll give you a great place to train. We have great trainers in place that will help you and give you the resources necessary in the training. It's a great deal. So life groups, that's where it's at. Okay, this is very, very important. All out there in media land. This is important. Take notes. There will be a very, very important meeting for all parents of our youth this Wednesday, January the 14th at 6.15 p.m. in room 207 with Pastor Rick Baker. If you have reservations for dinner, feel free to jump in front of the line, get your plate, and take it to the meeting with you. Pastor Rick will have the meeting while everyone is eating. Just don't forget to make your dinner reservation. That is important by Monday at 5. But all parents of our youth, who are awesome, by the way, let's hear it for our youth. Now let's hear it for the parents. Now don't skip that meeting. Don't miss that meeting. Pastor Rick's counting on you. It's important. And that's it. This is one of the most fun parts of being in the ministry if the Millers would please come forward at this time and bring Carson Jake with them and any of your family members that would love to join you here that would be awesome too please Tanya, if you would face me, the rest of you can just get behind them there. That'd be awesome. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, came, they brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God. Church, do you as the body of Christ receive this child in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and promise to be unto him a father, mother, brother, sister, and friend? Sam and Tanya, in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up this child in the fear and the admonition of the Lord? Will you, Sam and Tanya, seek to lead Carson to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord early in his life and promise that you will train him in body, mind, and spirit for the service and fellowship with God? Yeah. Please pray with me. Lord, we are so humbled to have the privilege to bless you and to bless this baby and to bless these parents in this church. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift to this family. Thank you for these parents who are dedicating themselves today to bring this child up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We pray your protection over Carson, that you would put a hedge of thorns around him, protect him from the enemy. Lord, let him grow up to know you early. And may he serve you all the days of his life. We're asking this in the strong name of Jesus. And we're asking your blessings upon him and upon these parents and this family. Thank you again for the gift, for the gift of life, for the gift of family. In Jesus' name, amen. You did good.
You did real good. Awesome. Paragart worked great. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all don't even know what that is. I was dating myself on that one. Yeah. This is a copy of the service, the dedication. And this is a certificate of dedication. Parson Jake Miller was dedicated to the Lord Jesus on the 11th day of January 2015 here at the Praise Center. And we would also like to present him with his first Bible. And it says that this is presented to Carson Jake Miller by Pastor Russell Davis in the Praise Center, January the 11th, 2015. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you, family, for your support today. Awesome. Thank you, church. All right. Amen. At this time, we would receive your harvest slips. If you have those filled out, hold them up, and we will collect them, and we'll pray over our harvest. If I can get a couple of guys to help collect those for me real quickly, please. All right. There's one back over here, Rick. Awesome. We have some over here, too. And in the middle, all around, in the back. <laughs> for those of you who may be our guest, this is when we pray for souls. This is a harvest basket that we put our harvest slips in. Harvest slips are pieces of paper that we write the names of people that we know need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we pray over them. Thank you, gentlemen. Would you join with me as we pray in faith? Lord, we thank you for putting on our heart the burden for souls. And Lord, these are not just names. These are people that we know. These are family members, neighbors, co-workers, schoolmates. These are people that you have put upon our heart that we know need to have a relationship with you because we know what our life was like before you. And we know that there is no other answer for them except to come to know you. They'll never be whole or complete or satisfied until that void in their heart is filled with you. So, Lord, we're praying for these along with the thousands of others that are already in this basket. Lord, we're praying and believing that you will answer our prayer because we come into agreement together, praying according to your will that would have none to perish, but that all should come to repentance and salvation. So, Lord, do the work. Holy Spirit, draw them. Bring them to you and let them call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. We ask this in the strong, powerful name of Jesus. And by faith, we thank you for their salvation. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen and amen. Would you stand together as we continue to worship God this morning?
every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
coldest word, the coldest heart, the deepest wound, the endless dark, the lonely ache, the burning tears, the bitter night. Indeed. I had just received this word that I'm about to bring you this morning on Wednesday and was just blown away by the Lord's goodness and grace for giving me part two of 
unforgotten I had something else altogether planned, but sometime on Wednesday, God just said, no, you're going to do part two of where you left off last Sunday. Matter of fact, God gave us a word through Betty at the end of that service, and that word that he gave her is the text for this sermon for this day. And anyway, I had just gotten all excited about what God was doing, and I walked in here, and they were rehearsing that song. And I said, unbelievable. That's my message. They, they were singing my message. They were singing the song. This is not forgotten, part two. If you've not had the opportunity to see part one, you can do that on our website, thepraisecenter.net, and follow the YouTube link, and it will take you there, and you can watch part one of Not Forgotten. And today is going to be part two. Our text for today is Isaiah 43, 15 through 19, and then Isaiah 53, part of verse 4. Let's read this together. Are you ready? I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Now verse 4 of Isaiah 63. And the year of my redeemed is come. The year of my redeemed is come. This is a new year. And I believe that this phrase expresses God's heart for us as believers, but also for us specifically here at the Praise Center for 2015. The year of my redeemed is come. Our until is here. Things have been a certain way until now. But now it's going to be different. The year of my redeemed is come. The year of my redeemed. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. This word is prophesying to us today just as it did thousands of years ago about the redemption that God would bring to mankind through Jesus. And as they just so beautifully conveyed in that song, no broken place, no wounded place, no shattered place will go unredeemed because he is the redeemer. He takes what the canker worm has eaten and the locust has destroyed and he restores it unto us. He restores even our mistakes when they've been put under the blood and put under the grace of God. And aren't you glad for grace? Let me ask a real big question this morning. Is there anybody in here who has not ever needed grace? Well, we're in all good company this morning because we have all needed grace at one point or another. And not only have we received grace, but aren't you glad that God has shown mercy? Because I don't really think there's anybody in here that hasn't needed mercy at some point or another in their life. Aren't you glad for the mercy of God? Well, since you've received mercy from God and since you've received grace from God, then why don't you act a little more merciful and a little more graceful? Amen. This word is announcing a glorious new year of divine fulfillment. By the way, I need to go back up just a minute and give credit to Jack Hayford who sent this newsletter to me and many other thousands, I'm sure. But this newsletter was God's timing because I was praying and saying, God, I just don't feel like we're finished with, I mean, I thought Sunday was a, was a prophetic day. It was, just a, it was just a red letter day. And I kept having something stirred in my spirit, but I had nowhere to go with it. I, I just didn't. And so I was working on another series that I felt like I'm supposed to do at some point this year. And, but I was praying, God, there's just something stirring about this. that It's not over, but I don't know what to do. And so I got this newsletter from Jack Hayford, and, and it just like, poof there it is 
You know, it's a timely word. God does that. Have you ever noticed that? That if you pray and ask God for wisdom, he grants it. Or if you pray and ask God for direction, he gives it. And it's just amazing how that happens. And so I have to give Jack Hayford credit for stirring this into my spirit at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place. And I'm just glad I opened that email. I'm glad I opened that letter. Yeah, it was awesome. So I'm good. Anything I say from this point is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was inspired by him. Awesome. God used it. And I hope he'll use what I'm saying to you today to take and share with whoever you need to share it. And you don't have to give me any credit whatsoever. It's all God's. Amen. But this is a year in which God's redemptive power is to be revealed in our lives in fresh and marvelous ways. This is not to be a year of maintaining the status quo. This is not a year to be maintaining the status quo. I believe the Lord has remarkable workings of his spirit planned for us in the days and months ahead. There are things that are going to be happening in the days and months ahead that God has ordained already. He's going to be revealing it to us by his spirit. And we're going to be walking in that obedience. We're going to be walking in that faith. But they are remarkable things. They're remarkable workings of his Holy Spirit that, that's going to be revealed that he's already had planned ahead of time. He's prepared distinct paths for each one of us to walk in. Paths of fruitfulness and purposefulness. Paths of advancement and tremendous triumph. We've been called to more than just survive. We've been called to thrive. And so he's got paths for each of us to walk in that are going to fulfill those places of thriving, those fruitful places, those purposeful places, those places of advancement and tremendous triumph. And he's preparing us for them. Not only has he prepared those paths, but he's preparing us for those paths. Look at your neighbors like, get ready. Get ready, he's got a path for you. And he's preparing you for those right now, at this particular moment in time. He's saying to you and to me this morning, you are my redeemed. I paid the price on Calvary to break the back of the enemy that has blocked my purposes in your life. I've conquered the darkness that has tried to encroach upon you. Rise up and rejoice. You are my redeemed and your year has come. You are my redeemed and your year has come. This is not the year for the same old, same old. This is not the year for the status quo. This is the year of the redeemed. It's your year. It's your year to walk in the abundance and the fullness that God has planned for you. It's time for you to get on the path that God has set for you. He's been preparing you all along for this day, for this moment, for this year. He's been getting you ready. And it's time right now for all of us to rise up and begin to worship God in spirit and in truth and rejoice in the Lord. And Again, I say rejoice. He is our God, and he hasn't forgotten us. We've not been forgotten. There's nothing that will not be redeemed. There's nothing that he can't overcome. There's nothing that he can't restore. It matters not how dead it is. It matters not how bad it stinks. It matters not how bad it's gone down. He is the God of resurrection power and glory, and you are his redeemed, and he's going to bring you out of it. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 says we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I want you to see the prophetic word of Ephesians 2.10. We are, that's present, we are now, we are God's handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for you to do. He's got a path for you to walk. He's got good works planned for you to do. And he planned those in advance. And this is the year. Glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says, Thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession 
and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. What a glorious word. God always, not part-time, not sometimes, he always leads us in triumphal procession. And he uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Jesus everywhere. For we are now. We are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ. Psalm 65, 11, You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. I want to give us this morning three biblical keys that will open the door for God's blessings that he wants to pour upon us in 2015. And I want you to get this today. I believe last week was a prophetic word that was a challenging word. It was an until now word. And I believe today is a roadmap to get us there, to show us how to, how to walk in that. And so the first key that's going to unlock the door, the first biblical key that's going to unlock the door of all that God wants to pour into our lives in 2015 is don't look back. Don't look back. The devil wants to remind you of your past. Ungodly people want to remind you of your past. Everybody wants to throw up your past, but I am telling you, don't look back and don't listen to the enemy and don't listen to those he uses. Don't look back. Look at verse 16 and 17 from our text. You may not be able to do that on the screen, but it, I'll just read it to you. It says, Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They shall be extinct. They are quenched just though. He was record, Jesus was saying, or, or God was saying, this is what I've already done. I've already done this. I made a way in the sea. I made a path in the mighty waters. And the horses and the chariots and the army that followed you in there, they were destroyed. They lie down together. They will not rise again. They are gone. But look at what he's saying in the next verse. Don't dwell on that. Remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Because I've got something better than that. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You shall, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. A desert is a dry place, a barren place. And a lot of us have been there. We've been in some dry desert places. We've been in some barren places. We've not seen fruit. We've not seen promises come forth. We've not seen fulfillment. But that was then. That was until now. That was until 2015. This is the year of my redeemed. This is the time. You are my redeemed, and you're going to walk in it. You're going to come forth into that new place. Now, the Hebrew word for remember refers to more than just having a recollection of, of something. It carries the idea of reenacting or rehearsing. And so he's saying, don't reenact the past. Don't rehearse the things of old. Because I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing something that you haven't seen before. So don't keep dwelling on the past. Don't keep looking back. Look ahead. Because people have the tendency to relive negative events from the past. We've all been there. And we've all gotten trapped in the mental ruts of repeatedly replaying and reciting the disappointments of yesteryear and yesterday and the years before. I'm going to date myself, I'm sure, on this, but it's okay. Some of you are my age and better. Notice I said better. Can any of you remember as kids getting one of those racetracks for Christmas that had the little slot cars on them? You know, and you push that little electric thing and it made it go faster and you tried to learn how to not fly off the curves and anybody remember those well those things didn't ever really go anywhere they went round and round and if you got a real expensive one it could even do a figure eight and if you were real rich you got one that went up and down and all around but it still never went anywhere 
It stayed on the same track. And it went the same path all the time, over and over and over and over. But listen to me. God does not want you living like slot cars. He wants to lift us up out of the rut of the past and onto the highway that he's prepared for us. He wants to get you off of that endless cycle that some of you have been in for years and years and years and years. It's been a cycle of defeat, a cycle of poverty, a cycle of unrealized dreams, a cycle of defeat, a cycle of discouragement, a cycle of brokenness, a cycle. God says it's time to get off of that cycle. It's time to get out of that rut. It's time to get off that track that's got you going in the same direction over and over and over. And I believe he's speaking that to us as a church this morning too, not just as our individual lives, but it's time for the praise center to get off the track of the past and get onto the new highways that God is paving for us. He's got pathways for us to walk in. He's got direction for us to go in. And he wants to lift us up out of the rut of the past and onto the highway that he's prepared for us. He wants to get us off of yesterday's dead-end street and onto new roads. But to do so, we have to look forward. We must stop looking back and talking about the past. Now, it's going to take some maturity to hear this part, whether good or bad. We cannot keep looking back even to the good because the past does not exist. And I would give credit to who that belongs to, but I don't know who it belongs to. Somebody shared it with me, and I don't remember who they said, said it. So God knows my heart. I'm not plagiarizing anything. I'm just repeating something that I heard. But the past does not exist. You can't go back into the past. It's not there. It's not there. And so every time you try to live in it, you're living in something that doesn't exist. No wonder there's no fruit there. No wonder there's no blessings there. There is nothing there because it doesn't exist. So why would you want to go back to nothing? And so God is saying to us, you can't even look back at the good things. Now you can remember the Lord and you can remember what the Lord did for you, but you will not go forward if you keep looking back. Say, so remember when? And a lot of people are still trying to get back to when? And God says, that's gone, that's done, that doesn't exist. I've got new things for you. I've got a new way for you. I'm doing something new. I've got a highway that you hadn't walked down yet. I've got a road that you hadn't traveled yet. Don't look back to the bad or the good. And the second key to unlocking the blessings of God, the first one was don't look back. The second one is wake up to your new day. Wake up to your new day. Ephesians 5 14, right after the word had said, it's the light that makes everything visible. And then in verse 14, it says, this is why it said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, you need to understand who this was written to. This was written to the saints at Ephesus. This is not a salvation message. This is not a salvation verse from Paul. This was to the church at Ephesus. This was to the saints at Ephesus. So why would a believer who's already been made spiritually alive in Christ need to rise from the dead? Why would a believer who's been made alive in Christ need to wake up? It's because over time the atmosphere of this sinful world can dull our senses and lull us to sleep. Because we're surrounded by negative events and negative people all the time. We live in a sin-cursed world. And people by nature are negative. Nobody ever tells you to go to the fourth green light and take a right. It's always called a red light. But it's green just as much as it is red. But we're programmed negatively. And if you're liberal, you just say go to the traffic light. (laughs) 
but we're surrounded by negativity. The news is negative. Everything that's happening is negative, it seems. And we're bombarded by that because over time, that atmosphere dulls us and causes us to fall asleep because the continual bombardment, we can actually become acclimated to spiritual deadness. Because of the continual bombardment, we can become acclimated. We get used to it. It becomes normal. We can begin to allow that deadness to numb our spiritual sensitivity and seep into our lives. And you want to know how you can tell that? Do some inventory. Check yourself. We begin to tolerate things that we know are not pleasing to God. We've been dulled. Our senses have been dulled. We've been so bombarded all the time, continuously, by those who don't believe, by those who have no faith, by those who hate God, by those who don't want God, we are bombarded with that all over and over and over, and pretty soon we begin tolerating things that we know are not pleasing to God. We get comfortable with the things of the world that we used to feel conviction over. Now we just kind of, yeah, it's not that bad. It's all right. Don't be judgmental. There's a big difference between judge, being judgmental and, and examining fruit. And there is no fruit in the past. And there is no fruit in negative things. We allow things into our homes that we know don't strengthen our walk with God. And I'm not going to be a legalistic pastor this morning and give you a set of rules and regulations about what you should or should not. That's between you and God. That's the Holy Spirit. But you know in your own heart that there are things now that you used to be convicted about. But because of the continual bombardment of the things of this world, we've lost our sensitivity. We've lost our spiritual senses. We've become dull. So at this new year, we need to take inventory. And we need to shake off any spiritual sleepiness that has crept into our lives. We need to wake up. We need to wake up again to the things of God. We need to wake up again to the Word. We need to wake up again to the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, show me if there's anything, if there's anything good or bad in my life that's not pleasing to God, that's causing me to not be in the place God wants me to be. I want to shake it off. Because I want to open the door for God's blessings this year. I want to walk in the fullness and in the abundance that God has for me this year. I don't want to look back. I want to wake up. And I want to rise up. Because this is the year of my redeemed. This is God's year. Don't look back. Wake up. It's a new day. I'm doing something new. And the third key. Expect the Lord to come into your world this year. Expect the Lord to show up. Expect the Lord to come into your world this year. Expect him to move in your life. Expect him to move in your circumstances. Expect him to manifest his power in a special way. We need to live with an attitude of joyful, and joyful anticipation and believe that Christ is about to invade. Let me say that again. We need to live with an attitude of joyful anticipation and believe that Christ is about to invade our private world with his transforming power. He has the power to transform. He can change things. And we need to expect him to. We need to be looking with joyful anticipation at what he's going to do next. God, I just can't wait to see what you're going to do next in my life. I can't wait to see what you're about to do. I can't see how you're going to provide. I can't wait to see how you're going to make this work out. God, I'm just fully expecting you to come into my world this year and change things. Be confident that he's going to change what needs to be changed. Because he is faithful. 
He who began a good work in you is going to complete it. He is faithful. He's not finished. He hasn't forgotten you. You are his redeemed. He knows how to take care of what belongs. It doesn't matter how long it's been broke. It doesn't matter how long it's been dead. It doesn't matter how long it's been down. He is the God of resurrection. He's going to redeem it. He's going to fix it. He's going to heal it. He's going to mend it. He's going to restore it. He is the God of restoration. What has been destroyed, God can make new again. And I've got news for somebody this morning. He doesn't take it back to where it was. He takes it to a whole new place that it's never been before. Some people are afraid of going back. Some people, when they come to me for marriage counseling, they say, we, we don't want to go back to what we had. And I said, I don't want you to go back there either. If it was any good, you wouldn't be sitting here talking to me. God doesn't want you to go back. He wants you to go ahead. He wants you to go forward. What you had wasn't that good. But he's got a new path for your marriage. He's got a new path for your finances. He's got a new path for your relationships with your kids. He's got a new path for your relationships with your brothers and sisters in Christ. He's got a new path for your financial recovery. He's got a new path. He doesn't want you to go back to what you had. He wants you to go to somewhere you've never been. I'm doing something new, he says. This is the year of the redeemed. And we need to have an attitude joyful anticipation god i just can't wait to see how you're going to work this out i don't know how i don't have to know how i'm just going to wait on you and they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like an eagle they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint hallelujah yeah. don't approach the future with a defeated attitude and demeanor don't approach the future with a defeated attitude and demeanor. Well, Lord, it's been like this for all these years. It's just going to stay this way. But that's okay. Your grace is sufficient. I'm just going to keep on keep. No, no, no. Wake up to your new day. Looking ahead and not behind. And believing God, expecting God, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, and leaning not to your own understanding, believing that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can think or imagine to ask. Know that God is God. There is nothing impossible with him. There is nothing too difficult for him. All things are possible to him that believes. Expect him to do something. Fix your eyes on Jesus and look up. Lift up your head, Luke 21, 28 says, because your redemption draws near. Lift up your heads. Don't be cast down. The psalmist wrote to himself, Oh, soul, why art thou cast down? He talked to himself. Oh, soul, why art thou cast down? While I have my being, I will bless the Lord. I will praise the Lord who is my God and my Redeemer. Some of you need to talk to yourself this morning. I give you permission. They won't lock you up. They won't come and get you. It's all right to talk to yourself this morning. Talk to yourself. Oh, soul, why are you cast down? Why are you looking down? Why are you so down and out? Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Tell yourself to get up out of it. Tell yourself to rise up out of it. Get out of the funk and tell yourself that I am believing what God says. I'm not going to go back. We're not going back. We're not backing down. We're moving forward in Jesus' name, and we're not going to that other place where nothing exists. Amen. Last week we learned that there is an until. God turned the heart of a king and everything changed. I believe this word today is God's roadmap for us to move ahead and fulfill our destiny. But we've got to make up our minds. We've got to determine that we're going to forge ahead with Jesus as our captain. And we're going to let him lead the way. We're going to let him lead the way. We're going to let him lead the way. Let's declare the victory that Jesus paid for. Let's determine to wake up and not look back. Let's determine that we're going to rise up out of this and we're going to get off that slot car track that takes us nowhere but in circles. And we're going to get on the highway that he's prepared for us. Let's expect the Lord to come through. 
How many of you will believe with me this morning? How many of you will say with me, Pastor, it doesn't matter what the last three, four, five years have been like. That's history. There's nothing there. It doesn't exist anymore. God's got a new thing to do. God's got a new plan. God's got a new road for us to walk down. God's got something new for my family. God's got something new for me. How many of you will declare it this morning? God's got something new for me today. God's got something better than I've ever known before. He's not taking me back to the past. That doesn't exist. He's taking me to the new place that he has for me. How many of you will believe that this morning and trust in that? We're going to worship the Lord in just a moment. And if you want to put a stake in the ground this morning, if you want to declare that publicly, if you want to declare before God, God, I am not going back. Today marks the line in the sand. I'm done. I'm done with the past. I'm not looking back. I'm not going back. I'm waking up to my new day. I'm waking up to what you've got for me. And I'm going to expect you to fully come through for me this year. If you want to make that faith publication of a proclamation, then you can just come right here to this altar and worship right here before God. You don't have to. You can do it right where you are. But I just think there's something about faith. I think there's something about stepping out. I think there's something about moving forward with God. And if you want to do that while we're singing this morning, just as a declaration of your own faith, I am not going back. I am forgetting the past. I'm moving ahead. I'm expecting God to do great things in my life this year. Then you just come forward and stand here as we worship God today. Go ahead.
shepherd, I release the resurrection power of Jesus Christ over this church, over every life, over every family, over every situation. Lord, I thank you that there is power in the name of Jesus, that every chain is broken. We hear the chains falling today. Lord, I thank you that things are happening in the spirit realm right now, that victory is being wrought, that lives are being transformed, that pathways are being illuminated, that people are taking steps of faith to walk out what you've given them, dreams that have been long sustained, long suppressed and downtrodden, Lord. I thank you that they're taking steps of faith now even today to say, I'm, I, I know that my God has called me to this. I know that God's redeemed me for this and I'm not backing down and I'm not going back. I'm going ahead. Lord, I release their victory. I release their uh, success in, in the path that you've ordained for them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper, that nothing shall hinder them or come against them that you won't overcome, for you are fighting with us. You are fighting for us. You are pushing back the darkness in Jesus' name. And Lord, I declare that today in Jesus' name, that for those who have struggled, I'm here to let you know that was until, that was until now the Lord is redeeming that. Now the Lord is redeeming and showing you a new way to go in Jesus' name. Fix your eyes on the Lord. Expect him to come through in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, and I just want to be obedient because uh, the spirit of the Lord says there is a spirit of doubt and unbelief in this place. And uh, the Lord would say, my people, fix your eyes on the history that I have shown you in my word. When the 12 spies were sent out, all 12 of them saw the same thing. But two saw life and the 10 saw death. And the Lord says to you, my people, choose this day life. I set before you life and death choose life come out of agreement with that spirit of cynicism and unbelief and 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 the belief that things are always going to be like they are that that pastor just trying to stir stuff up for the new year calls it's january the lord said that's a lie in jesus name because this is not going to be done this is not going to be done by a program or by a 10 step step uh social um uh a devotion each day but this is going to be done by the power of the spirit and so the lord says you may choose if you would rather go with the two who saw what could happen and believed or to saw the 10 who said we can't do it so the lord says i i, I say to you my people choose life and father we in the name of jesus as the body of christ we bind that spirit of doubt and unbelief and cynicism for you are not from the hand of god you are from from the pit and by the blood of Jesus we bind that spirit and we say be gone in Jesus name and father we say unto you may it be unto us as you have said glory to God glory to God thank you Praise Jesus God. thank you Lord thank you Jesus let's sing that course one more time as a declaration to put it to put the enemy at flight I will live I will not die the resurrection power of Christ alive in me. Let's sing that right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
receive that today in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for it. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 God bless you.